Nation Sunday. It's our 27th anniversary. Let's jump to our feet. We are going to celebrate our great King because He is the reason why we're here. So let's all stand and let's worship together. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what a Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Come on. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. through every storm and you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things and I know you will do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things God you do great things You conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Come on, sing it out, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, you're unshakable. Hallelujah, you done great things, you've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God. You have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, God, you do great So let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. So let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall, they'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of the breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With 
for being here today. You may be Amen. seated for just a moment. We're getting ready to uh, receive our Leave a Legacy offering. It's a special offering that we do every year, and uh, today is the day that we're going to present that, and there's a gold envelope in the chair in front, and Nita, uh, how, do we, how do we use that? Yeah, thing? so that gold envelope is specific for our Legacy offering. We ask you guys to take one home, pray over it, really ask Holy Spirit, what would you have me to give? You know, that's above your tithe and your regular offering. This is a special once a year legacy offering because we want to leave a legacy. We want to be an impact, not only now, but for the future. So we decided this year as we prayed with the elders, you know, every year we use the leave a legacy for things maybe like we've redone the stage, the sound equipment and different things. But several months ago when we talked about missions and reaching the world, we felt like the uh, elders as we were praying that we wanted to give the totality of our legal legacy offering this year to missions. And our goal is, and what we've been praying is that we can give away $100,000. And so we're on. really praying about that. So what you see today, what you see and you hold in your hand with that envelope, whatever God has spoken to you. And if you're new and you uh, weren't here when we talked about Leave a Legacy, you can still get one of those gold envelopes and you can ask God what he would have you to give today. This is a seed that you're sowing into the future not only your future but the future of your kids your grandkids Amen. so sometimes people say well i have this need from god well this is a great time to sow a seed right you sow a seed in faith 
and watch what God will do. Amen. We're not promising that if you sow a hundred dollars, a thousand, a million, God's going to give that back to you in double. We just say, if your heart is right and you sow that right. you want to see the world reached with the gospel Amen. of Jesus. That's what's so important. You know, seeds are different sizes, aren't they? So some people say, well, I don't have much to give, but that's not the right heart. That's not the right attitude. The right attitude is whatever I can give out of my heart that God has showed me will make a difference. So there's mustard seed and then there's big oak acorns and different sizes. So whatever you give, believe me, will make a difference. Yeah. Next week, Gail Stathis will be with us from uh, EME Ministries, and she's going to be sharing about some things that's happening on the mission field in countries that you and I can't get into, but because she's a dual citizen, she's able to get places that we're not. And we're already uh, helping a partner with her, yes. and so you want to be sure you're here next Sunday about that. But when we talk about a seed, I want you to listen to God, what he would say to you to plant as a seed today. Uh, watch this video that help us maybe get it in our mind what we're talking about a forest begins with one seed that grows and multiplies but the seed needs to be released to see a miracle come to life when you plant a seed it may not seem like much is happening at first there needs to be patience faith and sacrifice but slowly, the seed shows signs of life. Before we know it, from the seed grows a tree. The more seeds, the more trees, and one day, a forest. The forest won't come today, but it won't happen without a seed. Patience, faith, sacrifice. This is what it means to leave a legacy. The time is now. The possibilities are endless. And this seed is our legacy. Wow. The more Amen. seeds we sow, and, and as a church, it may be just you have one seed, but somebody else is sowing a seed, and we're sowing that. Now, I know some of you have already given to leave a legacy. In fact, you've given, so you helped us respond this week to an emergency need in Ukraine. One of the people that we partner with is Follow the Need International, and they sent us a request last week from Ukraine that people are, of course, with the bombs and everything, people are, are being wounded, and they're being left in the streets because there are not enough ambulances to pick up the people. So they called us the, a, a week or so ago and said, is it possible that you could help us buy an ambulance in Poland and we can drive it over? So this week, because of your advance giving, we were able to purchase that ambulance in Poland and get it to the Ukraine Amen. in the next week or so. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now, I, maybe you prayed about what God would have for you to give, but I want you to think about it today as a seed. You're giving in faith. Anita and I prayed, Lord, what would you say? And the number that he gave us was more than what we thought we would give. Uh, but we gave that because that's what God was saying for us to sow, to sow a seed. So I want you to hear what God, maybe, maybe you weren't even planning on giving, but something stirred in your heart a minute ago. So I'd like you to ask the Lord what he would have you to give and use that gold envelope. And then maybe the Lord would say to you, double it. Or maybe he would ask you to add an M, you know, like an M to I L L. Oh, Add an M to Ilion. <laughs> it's between you and God. Amen. We never force anyone to give here, but it's between you and God. What seed will you sow to leave a legacy? What I believe with all my heart is that one of these days when we get to heaven, there's going to be people that will come up to you and to me and they'll say thank you. Thank you that you gave in that seeds campaign. Thank you you gave in that legacy offering campaign. Because of you, one of those boxes, those proclaimers with the gospel faith that we talked about a few weeks ago came into our nation. And because of that, I was able to accept the Lord. But you sowed a seed Amen. 
not even knowing how the God would right. bring that harvest. Amen. Now we're also receiving our regular tithes because your legacy offering is not moving your tithe from your regular tithing giving. We're receiving that as well. So maybe you'd have two different envelopes and that's okay. Or if you did it online, even if you already gave to the legacy, you could grab one of those gold envelopes and put already gave online because we're going to pray over that. And then we're going to receive that. And we're going to give God all the glory. Would you hold your uh, offering in your hand and let's pray. Father, we respond today not to a need for uh, something here on our building or uh, increasing salaries. Lord, this is going to outreach to our community ministries that we help partner with into our nation and to globally. And next week, we'll learn more about what's happening on globally with the seeds we've already been sowing. So I pray today, Lord, because you taught us that as we give in faith, mm. not only as we give in faith, but as we give with an, a giving heart, that you're going to bring a victory. Yes. You're going to bring a miracle. Yes. So, Lord, we pray that with our giving today, it's going to cause a miracle not only around the world, but a miracle in our legacy in our kids, our grandkids, and our great-grandkids. Amen. We are declaring a victory. Yeah. Are you ready to declare yes. a victory? Yes. As we receive, if we receive this gift, this legacy gift, we are going to declare victory because God is on our side yes. and he's the one who's leading, guiding, and directing us. So as you give, we're going to continue with worship yeah. and just, you know, let's open up heavens the heavens and let's declare a victory yeah. so stand with me and let's sing this song and let's place our seed in the uh, planting of what the lord wants to do amen i'm gonna see a victory i'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see a victory I'm going to see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Declare it Said, I'm going to see a victory I'm going to see a Yes For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm going to see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord oh. The weapon may be formed but it won't prosper and when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Declare that this morning. We say, my God will never fail. So I'm going to see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. So I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. favorite part right here there's power in the mighty name of Jesus and 
every war he wages, he will win. So I'm not backing down from any giant. Why? Because I know how this story ends. Oh yeah, we know how this story ends. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I will see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, hey. Mm, you work all things for my what the devil meant for evil You turn it all around And you work it for my good Said you work it for my good Let's sing this bridge together You take what the enemy for you Yeah And you turn it That's right You turn it Oh yeah, you know it Let's declare it this morning You take what the enemy for evil and you turn it for good Yes you do Turn it for good You take, you take You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You turn it all around You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good you take, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Turn it all around. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory.
I'm gonna see ya. I'm gonna see ya for the battle belongs to you, Lord. See, the devil would like nothing more for you to give up just on the brink. Just like the video show, we can't see when that seed is about to burst forth. We don't know what God and the angels that he's assigned to us are doing. We may not be able to see it, but we've got to have faith. We've got to trust that if he said it, if he promised it, then it will come to pass. So I'm going to see ya. I'm going to see ya. For the I'm gonna see ya. I'm gonna see ya. For the battle belongs to you. One more time. I'm gonna see ya. I'm gonna see ya. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Said I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for who you are. Not just what you do, God, but for who you are. Your character that is faithful. You never leave. You never break promises, God. And we're thankful that we can rely solely on you, Father, to do what you said and to see it come to pass, God. And even if we don't see it in the land of the living, we know that in eternity, God, we will see those things that we have desired. Father, we thank you for this service, the celebration, God, that we are celebrating 27 years, God. What faithfulness you've shown, Father, for the people that have been here from the very beginning and those that are here now, God, that we have caught the vision and kept running with it, Father. We thank you for it. We give you praise. We honor you because you are good in all of your ways. And it's in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus that everyone in this house shouted, Amen. 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 <laughs> Go ahead and turn to the people around you and say, Happy 27. family. This is my lovely lady, Pastor Simone, and I'm Thurman, and we are just honored to be standing before you today. Amen. Uh, it's it's going to be, it has been such an amazing day. It will be such an amazing day because this is the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. in it. Amen. Let's say our mission statement together. We are bringing hope and impacting our community by leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus. If you are new with us here at the Father's House, please make sure you take one of these connection cards. There we go. From the seat back in front of you and fill it out to as much as you feel comfortable. At the end of service, take it to the new Here Start Here table in the front foyer because we have a special gift just for you. That's right. And at the very bottom it says, how can we help you? Feel free to write down any prayer requests or praise reports. And if you need more space, you can also utilize the back. Absolutely. We have so much going on here at the Father's House. So please go to thefathershouse.com for all you need to know. Yes. And please make sure if you haven't already on your way in, grab a six pack. 
Yes, I said a six pack. We are not your grandmama's church. We have invites on the front table, and we want you to invite people for Easter. Easter's coming up. Yes, yes. And, it, and we know that people come to church a lot of times for the first time on, yes. on Christmas and at Easter, so yeah. we all have someone that we know could benefit so from that. Go ahead and grab one or two. Grab a few of them. Just hand them out because we want to celebrate, and it's going to be a great Sunday. That's awesome. right. And our quarterly fast is coming up. Mm -hmm. It will be on the 3rd, April the 3rd. 4th, and the 5th. Awesome, yes. And if you're not familiar with the fasting, please, again, go to thefathershouse.com, and that will explain all about fasting, the different type of fasting that you can choose from, and the verses that go along with them. Okay? And we will be breaking our yes. fast that Wednesday on the 5th. For the uh, night of worship. communion. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're here that night. It's going to be awesome. Yes. Wonderful. Well, family, it's here. 27 years. 27 years. years. And listen, I just thank you, Pastor uh, Terry, PA. I know it's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears poured <laughs> into this. I know you, you're not alone. I know you had many people that helped you along. But the vision, you, you accepted the vision that God uh, gave you. Amen. And Planted we just are so blessed that you have put up with people like us for so many years. <laughs> Yes, and let's not forget to pour into our children, into our youth, because they are the next generation. They are the future, and they are going to get the baton when we pass it on to them. So let's make sure we pour into them so they can impact the future one day in leadership here at the Father's House. So here's to 27 years and many more. Happy anniversary, Father's House. That's right. Yeah. Check out this video.
Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Hey man, let's Woo! give the Lord a hand clap. Wow. Yay God. Yay God. Yay. Yay God. Thank Yay you, God. Jesus. Yay God. Yay God. Yay God. Wow. wow. Thank you. 27 years. Yes. And still going. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making that happen. I, I, I feel stronger today and more passionate than I did 1,404 Sundays ago <laughs> when we started in Shoney's Hotel, yes. which actually caught on fire this week. So yeah. uh, maybe that's symbolic. Something else is going to happen. Without knowing know. anybody, without having anything but a vision from God and a cassette player to play worship, I'm in all the feels right now because, you know, 27 years went by really fast, but bringing back memories, we didn't know what we were doing. And that's a good thing because God was able to tell us what to do. And we just followed all along. And you guys are what the church is not the building. Look around. This is the church. And because of awesome people like you and those before you, we've been able to make a difference. And my heart, this is my heart, Lord. I pray that one person's life changed for the better because of this ministry. Not because of us, but because of what God has done in and through the Father's house. Amen. Hey, uh, how many of you, just by think, how many of you have been here at least 20 years? Would you stand? You've been here with Woo! us for at least 20 years. Okay. Wow. Amen. 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 <laughs> Look at that. Lacey, you were like seven. Yeah, I don't know. Lacey was just a baby. Wow. You know, 27 years, well, we got a lot more years ahead of us Amen. that God is going to work because this is not about me and Anita. It's about you and it's about his kingdom. And so today we have a real honor to have with us pastors Kevin and Melissa Goff from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, they pastor uh, three, one, two, three great churches, <laughs> two in Phoenix and one in Oklahoma City. Yes. Another one they're looking at in Arizona. Uh, you know, what, what I love about pastors Kevin and Melissa is a lot of people like for them to come to their church to tell their story. They have an amazing story. There'll be a book that will be coming out very soon about their life. Uh, John Mason is co-writing that with them. I, I prophetically say it'll be a movie one day because I really believe that very, very strongly. And a lot of people like to have them to come and, come and tell your story. But I was thinking a minute ago when I, when I was there, I thought, well, here at the Father's house, uh, we don't like them just because they come and tell their story. Their story makes them who they are. But we like them because the people that they are and how that God has knit their hearts with our hearts. Amen. Do you agree, Father's Amen. House? Amen. Wow, it's just so awesome. 20, almost 22 years. Yeah, 22 years we've been friends. Isn't that amazing? Wow, it's been good. So uh, I'm sure he's going to introduce his lovely wife, but I want you to stand to your feet and give a warm welcome to Pastor Kevin Goff as he Woo! comes this morning. All right. Love you, Love you brother. Love you. Hey, hey. Woo. how y'all doing? 27 stinking years. That's a long time. Uh, I, it seems like I've been celebrating anniversaries left and right recently because the Rock Church, we just had our 26th year, uh, the beginning of this month. Yeah. And uh, because we have the different locations, we celebrate it all month and we get to end the month here with your 27th years. I, I, I know that some of y'all, uh, your 27 years, maybe you've only been here 27 minutes. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. You can appreciate this by the end of your journey today because in watching just our part in the last 22 years of being their friends, it's been incredible to see what God has done through everything, through all the attacks, through all the enemy wants to do through the changes of faces and people, Pastor Terry and Anita continued to grow it, continued to be faithful, continued to do God's will, continue, come on. And you might say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is the average pastor's life at a church is three and a half years. He's outlasted many pastors here at this place, and she has outlasted many, many people that would walked along beside a man walking in this mission. And so I know, you already done, I know you've already done it, but do me a favor one more time. 
Put your hands together for Pastor Terry and Anita. Let them know. Just let them know your appreciation for them. Yeah, come on. That's, uh, that's incredible. Truly, truly, truly incredible. And I think the comment was made through blood, sweat, and tears. And I can tell you as a pastor, it's mainly sweat and tears. Um, we pray there's no blood. <laughs> but there is a lot of sweat and tears in building a church from the ground up to remain through the years. And so we honor you. We appreciate you. We love you. Uh, pastor Terry and Anita, they're, they're just some of our dearest friends. Uh, pastor Terry and I talk several times throughout the week, and he means the world to me. Next to them is the most beautiful woman in the world. Um, there was a song. I don't know if you all remember Charlie. Anyone remember Charlie Rich? Oh, yeah said, hey, if you happen to see the most beautiful girl in the world, I'm thinking, why did they write a song about my wife? <laughs> and uh, she, is, she, she is my best friend. We've been married this June for 40 years. 40 years. Yeah. And uh, she, deserves, she deserves a lot of praise for that because she walked through a lot of stuff uh, with our family and with us. And uh, we just appreciate, once again, being here at the Father's house. I call this my Florida home, my Florida family. I look across here and I think, wow, the years that we've grown friendships and the faces that we know and the names that we've come to know and the relationships we've come to build are fantastic. Come on, we do me a favor? You know I like to make a declaration. If you have your Bible, get it in your hand. If not, just come on, reach over and grab somebody else's Bible with them, not from them, but with them. And, and let's all say this. I want, you, I want to hear it loud and proud. Repeat it after me. Father, Father this, is your word. this is your word. Your word is spirit, word is spirit. Truth, truth, and life. And life. You, are you are my life. I come now, I come now. With, open eyes, with open eyes, open ears, open ears. an open heart, open heart, and an open mind open to receive everything yes. you have for me yes. in your word. Yes. From this day forward, yes. I will be forever changed into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Come on now, someone give him praise. He's worthy. And I know that every week you have an online community, your family online. I, uh, I, I, I join you online almost every Sunday. I don't know how many of you ever watch online, but I try to make a comment here and there. And I think maybe I shouldn't because I'm always saying something funny and I don't want to take away from the great teaching going on. But I do consider you family. Those of you online, you are family. You know, many can't be here. We just welcome you here today to the Father's house. Aren't you glad they join us every Sunday, right? That's a fantastic thing. Yeah. Um, as I begin today, I just want you to think, I recall when our children were young, our children were just young and they begin to draw. Y'all remember having children when they would begin to draw? Uh, I, always found a, I found, always found it interesting seeing from their vantage point, their, the perspective that they saw, how everything was basically just habit. It was just form. There was no variances in their drawing. In other words, every tree looked the same. Uh, whether it was a chihuahua or a German shepherd, they were all the same size. Uh, people, uh, people all looked the same. They were basically stick people, right? They were stick people. And, and I remember thinking, man, I, I can't wait to see my children grow, to see as they begin to flourish in their thought process, as they would begin to see life at more expanded. And sure enough, through the years of school, teachers start teaching them how to see and view more. So all of a sudden, the leaves of a maple tree start looking like maple leaves, uh, dogs now begin to look like different shapes and sizes. Their, their friends all of a sudden were shaded in with different colors and they begin to notice different things. And I guess to be honest, I kind of kind of wish they would have still seen me as a stick man instead of what they saw when they really looked at me. Uh, and, and I thought to myself how it was that they saw life just one particular way. And I don't know if you know this or not, but we all tend to do that. We all tend to get stuck if we're not careful seeing life in one particular way. If we're not careful, we don't view things beyond what we see in our thoughts, in our way, in our, in our upbringing, in the way we were kind of shaped within our world. And so we have to expand the way we see things. We have to expand the way we view things. Can you say amen? I want to ask you a question today, and I know that some of you are thinking, where's he going with this? I thought this was a relationship series, and it is. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. Uh, I, I, I know Pastor Terry opened up this whole series with talking about the baggage we carry. Come on, look at someone and say, you have some baggage. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that was the greatest response I got yet right there. Y'all really enjoyed that just a little bit too much. But, but I really want to ask you a question, and this is the question I have for you. 
Uh, I, and I want to reveal to you something that I think will help us understand the baggage that we do carry. What do you see when you see yourself in the mirror? Come on, everyone say, in the mirror. In the mirror. So what do you see when you see yourself in the mirror? And I wanted the mirror on the stage because I want you to begin to think about that as we contemplate this for the rest of this talk today. What is it when you view yourself that you see? What is it when you look into a mirror? What is it you think of about yourself? How many here has ever had, many of us have, had our, our problems with negative self-talk, negative self-image? Come on, y'all with me. Uh, we begin to see ourselves and we begin to be critical of ourselves. And all of a sudden, we don't understand the power that's there. And so I'm convinced the greatest relationship we experience outside of our relationship with God is the relationship we develop with ourself. Come on. Everyone say, myself. myself. How I view myself affects my marriage. How I view myself affects my friendships. How I view myself affects how I raise my children and my grandchildren. It affects my financial status in my mind, how I see what I think I deserve, what I, what I beat myself up over, what I, what I think I don't deserve. I'm, I'm just a worm after all. And if everyone knew who I was and how I acted and what I've done in my past, they wouldn't accept me anyway. And I know that I'm talking to everyone in the room because somewhere all of us have had this thing or these thoughts go through our minds, amen? Yeah. And so I think when we look at this, it develops in our life many times toxic relationships because we haven't dealt with the toxicities within ourselves. Right. Right. It develops toxic marriages because we haven't dealt with the toxicity within our own system, within our own life, within our own image, how we view our Self, Come on, are you, can you say amen? amen? And so why does this, this apparatus, why does this very thing right here, and when we look at it, what is it that you see? How do you, how do you speak to yourself? Why does this strike such fear in our life that we would look at this instrument that's before us and it promotes such fear and trepidation to how we view things? And I got the, I got the answer for it as I, was, as I was thinking through this process. It's because it represents responsibility. Come on, everyone say responsibility. Your upbringing is not responsible for who you are. Your spouse, your ex-spouse, your last four spouses... They are not responsible for who you are. Your parents are not responsible for who you are. Your friendships and your associations are not responsible for who you are. Who you have become is, it is the total sum of how you view yourself. It is the total sum of the, the respect you've gathered for yourself or the criticism you keep throwing at yourself. It is that voice inside of yourself that has either built you up to know who you are and believe who you are or has torn you down to the fragments that you've become in your life that you're still trying to piece together. And I've got news for you. God created you in his image after his likeness in the fulfillment of who he is. He's created each one of us and we've got to get a a good image of ourselves. Come on, amen? So in your struggle, in your self-image, in your self-talk, in your self-criticism, what are, what are some of the things that you find yourself saying to yourself? What is that movie, that reel, that movie reel that goes through your head concerning your life? What is that elevator music that plays on the loop in your head? What is that message that's constantly there? Do you tell yourself, you're so stupid. Why do you always do such stupid things? Or do you tell yourself that I was created in the image of God and after his likeness? And I believe there's greatness in me that God put there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep mining and chiseling away and, and, and develop that within my life as God sees me to be. Who does God see you to be? That's the real question. And when can you begin to see yourself as God sees you? That is the real question. So our relationship with ourself has one of the greatest impacts on our faith journey. So this, this title of this, this uh, series has been called Relation. I'm not sure what that last part is. <laughs> Relationships. Uh, and I love the way whoever created that created it because it does tell a story in the background that relationships are messy, that relationships are difficult, that relationships are not easy, 
That's why we celebrate 27 years of the Father's house because it's been relationship that's been built up on top of relationships that's been built up on top of relationships. And then we finally got some tough people that will stand the test of times and realize that when things get tough, you do not turn on relationships. You keep building on relationships. Families should not go through separation. They build on relationships. But many times we've built on ourselves. Many times we've separated ourselves from ourselves not to look at ourselves because we don't want to deal with ourselves. And the truth is maybe, just maybe, the relationship and the toxicity you have in some of your relationships isn't the other person after all, but it's the image here that you refuse to see. It's the apparatus you're not using to view yourself. It's the apparatus we're not choosing to see who we really are when really we need to deal with ourselves first or our marriages and our friendships and our family life and our work life and, our, and all the things that represent us in this earth, we become comfortable with because we've become comfortable in our own skin. This world will tell you that because of your so, social economic background or the color of your skin, that you're, held, that you're held captive. Let me tell you something. By the word of God, we are free indeed. It doesn't matter who you are, what your background has been. You are free. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all with me. So the title I want to give you for today's talk is Limitless Love. Limitless Love. I don't think God puts a cap on anything. God is limitless. He's a limitless God. And when it comes to him, we know that God is love. And if God is limitless, we know that God is love. We know that he possesses for each one of us. And therefore, we can possess for one another limitless love. And if that's the case, then we have to know that if the most important relationship is with God, with ourselves, between us and God, then the key to limitless love within our life is ourselves. Amen? Amen? Come on, y'all with me? So the thought many Christians have is, well, it's, it's God's responsibility solely for the way life plays out. Well, if that's the case, then he's messing a lot of stuff up. Right? If he's a perfect God and he's responsible for all things, then he's messed a lot of stuff up in, in my lifetime of seeing things. So there must be more to the equation than just God doing all things. There must be a part that we play. What part do you play in this picture? Look at the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. We are workers together for God. Everyone say workers together. One version says co-labors. God does, God does his part, but we must do our part. So we're co-workers together for God, and you're like a farm that belongs to God. You're a house that belongs to God. Like an expert builder, I built the foundation of that house. I used the gift that God gave me to do this. Other people are building on that foundation, but everyone should be careful how they build. Let me say that again. Everyone should be careful how they build. We're building our life on a foundation of Jesus Christ, which we know he gave us our life, and we box him in to think it's gonna be a certain way, and we're not careful with decisions we make, we don't think about the decisions we make. We just build haphazardly instead of looking at the blueprint called the Bible that tells us how our marriage is supposed to be, how our friendships are supposed to be, how our life is supposed to be. And we build what we're either comfortable with. We build what someone else told us we should build. We build all kinds of stuff, but we're not careful. And the Bible says we should all be careful how we build. Y'all remember the old song and statement, be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little ears what you hear. Maybe it's time we say, be careful little hands what we build. What we're allowing into our relationships, what we're allowing into our lives is a very important thing. Then verse 11 says, the foundation that has already been built is Jesus Christ and no one can build any other foundation. And speaking of foundation, let's continue to build the foundation for this talk. And the next verses here that we're going to read, there's a lawyer trying to trap Jesus, trying to trick Jesus. They were always doing that. And he's asking Jesus about the laws. And so we pick it up in Matthew 22, 37. Jesus answered when he says, what's the greatest laws? Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second command is like the first, love your neighbor as you love yourself. All of the law and the writings of the prophets take their meaning from these two commands. And I'm convinced in reading this scripture, 
we overlook one of the most important parts. I want you to see it again. Look at the second part of verse nine. Love your neighbor the same as you love yourself. Love your neighbor the same as you love your neighbor the same as you so once again, maybe the toxicity in your relationships don't have a lot to do with the other person. It has to do with the fact you don't love yourself like you should. Wow, wow, wow. That you don't view yourself created in the image and after the likeness of God. Maybe it's time that you say to yourself, I've got to look at myself. I've got to see the mirror that I'm supposed to be viewing. I've got to take a self-objective look at myself. I've got to view myself and take care of myself and quit worrying about everybody else's attitude and how they treat me. How is it I'm treating myself? What is going on inside my own heart? What is taking place inside my own mind? What is it that I'm thinking of myself yes, sir. Yes, sir. if I'm to love others as I love myself? It's possible you're thinking, well, I already knew this, Pastor. Okay, then maybe we should take a longer look at this next scripture, James chapter 1. If you know this, then look at this, James 1, 22, 25. Do what God's teaching says. Don't just listen and do nothing. When you only sit and listen, you're fooling yourselves. Hearing God's teaching and doing nothing is like looking at your face in the mirror. Everyone say mirror. Mirror. When you hear God's word and walk away doing nothing, it's like looking at your face in the mirror and doing nothing about what you saw. You go away and immediately forget how bad you looked. Mm. Last week, um, I woke up early and I was in a hurry. I had a lot of appointments that day and I had some early morning appointments and, and I love morning life anyway. And so I jumped up and I, I got my clothes ready, got in the shower, got out. I was all, I was all excited. My first meeting, I was meeting with these young guys, kind of mentoring and I jump in the truck. I get down the road. I get about a mile from the house. I happen to look up in the mirror and I realize I didn't even comb my hair. <laughs> I didn't even comb my hair. It was just kind of there. You know what I'm saying? It was just kind of there. Uh, thank God it's still there because I see some of you have a problem in that area. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me when I say you have a head this big, you need hair. Um, and, and, so, and so I had to go back home. I had, to, I had to make sure I straightened my hair up and got ready because I looked in the mirror. I glanced at myself, but then I walked away and forgot how bad I looked. Y'all getting the, y'all getting the picture now. I walked away and forgot how bad I looked. L- listen, listen to this. It's important. Uh, verse 25. But when you look into God's perfect law that sets people free, pay attention to it. What does that mean? Pay attention to it. It means stay there until you do something about it. Don't walk off into a spiritual life because after all, you have a body, you possess a body or you possess a soul that lives in a body, but you are spirit. Do not walk into your spiritual life and your daily walk. Do not walk through your marriage and your friendships with your children or whatever it may be and forget how bad you look spiritually. Stay there, look at yourself. Don't just glance at yourself. Make sure you're taking care of yourself and do something about your spiritual life. Come on, amen? Why is that important? Because it's, if you do what it says, you will have God's blessings. See, some of you have a lot of stuff you want, but you're not satisfied because it's something you wanted, but it wasn't God's blessings upon it. Relationships isn't always what God planned for us. Sometimes we plan it ourselves without paying close attention and being careful about what we build. Then we have an unfulfilled relationship and we blame the partner or the spouse or the boyfriend or the girlfriend. And the problem isn't that. The problem is you weren't careful in who you chose. You weren't careful to see if it lined up with God's word. You weren't asking God, is this the, wor- is this the person for me? You, you didn't even inquire of God. You just chose and now you're unfulfilled and you blame the other person when the truth is you should have fixed yourself first by looking at the perfect law of God's liberty. Is this all right? No, nobody's mad at me yet, are you? Some of y'all look pretty grumpy right now. (laughs) Then the last line is never listen to his teaching and forget what you heard. Never listen to his teaching and forget what you see. Some of you, you listen to the teaching, you feel, you feel conviction, but you forget about it and you're walking through life miserable. People look at you, they know you're miserable. They see you're sad in your heart and you know what it would cost you to break away what you're involved in, but yet you don't want to because you prefer that. You didn't ask God what he preferred. You asked yourself what you preferred. You went with your own preference. Then you don't have God's blessings. Now you're miserable. You don't know why. It's gonna cost you something to do it right. And now we don't wanna pay that cost, but we continue paying the cost of misery for the rest of our lives. <laughs> that brother right there said, preach it. Thank you. I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm, I'm, gonna, 
I'm going to take your advice. Let, let me give you some thoughts to write down. Here we go. Some thoughts I want you to write down because I, I've got a limited time. Let's discuss some things that will release limitless love in our lives. I feel they're very important, these principles, that we get them in our heart. The first one is this. Limitless love begins with self-acceptance. Yes. Limitless love begins with self-acceptance. Everyone say self-acceptance. self-acceptance. That's, that's a tricky thought, self-acceptance, because it means we accept ourselves for who we are. Um, all of our things that we have. Without judgment, we're not talking about with judgment, we accept our strengths and we accept our weaknesses. We see what we're doing right, but we must view what we're doing wrong, right? Uh, And and acknowledgement of those things is vitally important. Look at Psalm 139, 14. I will give thanks to you because I have been so amazingly and miraculously made. Your works are miraculous and my soul is fully aware of this. You've heard the version uh, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and that my soul knows very well. Th- this says you, we're, we're miraculous. Look at someone and say, you're a miracle. Come on, now make it a self-declaration. Everyone say, I'm a miracle. Why do we choose to tear down what God called Miraculous. Why do we choose to beat down what God is trying to build up, right? We acknowledge the areas of our weaknesses, but we don't identify that as who we are. We see who we're created to be in his image. We see those things that don't represent that. We don't let them tear us down. We don't let them beat us up. We change them through the love and the grace of God by the image of who we're supposed to be. Have you ever watched sports? And my wife hates sports analogies, although last night she stayed up watching UFC after I went to bed. I tried to sleep and she's in there going, ooh, ooh, ooh. But she's always been the hitter in our family. <laughs> you know, that's not true. I wouldn't have said that. But if you've ever watched a pole vault or a high jumper, you'll see that they back way up from what they're going to do. They close their eyes and they're doing this number. What are they doing? See, their eyes are closed, but they're seeing. Yeah. Everyone close your eyes just for a moment. Think of yourself, your self-image, your self-talk. What do you see? Now everybody look at me. It really doesn't matter what you see right now, but it's the same process. Everyone sees differently. Everyone has different vision. Everyone has different, you, I have a 20-20 vision, smart aleck. I have, I, have, I have this. Well, that's great. But it, you can be 20-20 vision, but when you close your eyes, be so blurred, Whoa. be so blind, Whoa. and be so hurt that it's tearing your life apart and you don't want to recognize it. That's good. Check this out. I think it's important. Loving ourselves is the key to unlocking the full potential of God in our lives. It's the key to unlocking limitless love within our life. Pastor, how can you say that? Well, the opening scripture said that we love the Lord our God and we love others as we love ourselves. And all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. In other words, the word becomes activated in our life as we love God and we love our, we love our neighbor as ourself. So literally this type of love I'm talking about concerning ourselves opens the word of God, activates the word of God, makes the word of God become powerful and strong and sharper than any two-edged sword because when we speak it now, we speak it knowing who we are in God, not who we are in our flesh, not who we are in our actions, but come on, that God is building us up. God is changing us. God is directing our life. Now all of a sudden we have a different accountability because we see ourselves in the image of almighty God. Amen. So that's a powerful thing to think that those two things, loving God and loving our neighbor as ourselves, are the very thing that releases and activates the word of God within our life. Come on, everyone say limitless love love. begins with self-acceptance. Number two, limitless love love grows with self-care. So we accept ourselves, but limitless love grows with self-care. Self-care is taking responsibility to take care of ourselves. Now, I understand some of you can be like, the Bible says, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. It's true. But he don't say cast all the cares. What he's saying is, cast all the cares you can't carry. He's not taking everything, but what you can't do, you do what you can do in the natural, then God comes and adds his super to what you can't do, and it becomes supernatural. Y'all with me? And so we we have to understand what he's saying. So self-care is taking action to nurture our spiritual well-being. 
our spiritual life. I know y'all come to church. You hear some of the best teaching right here at the father's house. That's great. I'd listen to it every week because Pastor Terry and some of your teachers are some of my favorite teachers. You're blessed to have these teachers you have in the house. That's an awesome thing, right? (laughs) Um, And then maybe you're in a small group. You love your small group. You found out you grow more in circles than you do rows. In other words, you grow more out there than you actually do just hearing a one 30 minute sermon because now you're doing life together, amen? But the greatest spiritual growth you will ever have is to become a self-feeder. Everyone say self-feeder. When our kids were young, our infant child, what I'm talking about, uh, you, you have to feed them. You don't just let them feed themselves unless you want to clean up a great big mess. You feed them. You ever had your kids be stubborn, not want to eat, right? I used to play tricks on them. Here comes an airplane. Here comes an airplane. Open the hatch. They fall for it every time. Self-eating. But once they grow up, we, we don't, well, we shouldn't do that anymore. It's, it's just not meant to be that way, right? They begin to feed themselves. That's why we say, oh, that's such a cute, chubby little baby. We see cute, chubby little babies, but we see obese adults because we always grow more when we feed ourselves. Y'all see the principle? Um, I, when my family had the accident that destroyed my wife's body and broke her neck and back and killed our nine-year-old twin son, um, it was a time when my wife was frustrated being her neck was broken, she's in a body cast. One of the frustrations she went through, she might not remember, was not being able to feed herself at first. She couldn't look down enough to really feed herself and get it, it would be one of those things. And she would try, and trust me, it wasn't pretty at all, just food everywhere. It's like, it was just, it was a horrendous thing. But I remember when she finally got the fork back in her hand. She was like William Wallace in Braveheart. <laughs> you can break my neck, but you can't take my fork. <laughs> Come on, y'all with me? I mean, really, it's, it's sad. It's, it's sad, but this girl was determined. Everyone say determined. determined. We're meant to feed ourselves. So let me say it like this. Self-care is not just an activity. It's a mindset. You have to be determined that you're going to become a self-feeder spiritually within your life. You have to be determined that the pastor is not responsible for feeding you for the rest of your life, but you are responsible to feed yourself through self-care. Amen? Amen. Look at this, Proverbs 19.8. To acquire wisdom is to love yourself. To acquire wisdom is to love yourself. People who cherish understanding will will prosper. Can I just say to you? that acquiring wisdom is your and my responsibility. The acquiring part is our part. That's what we have to do. He gave us the word and now we must dig in and feed ourselves. By the way, you're not just responsible for your spiritual life, you're also responsible for your physical life. In other words, look at 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Do you not know that your body is a house of God where the Holy Spirit lives? God gave you his Holy Spirit. Now you belong to God. You don't belong to yourselves. God bought you with a great price. So honor God with your body. You belong to him. Before we get to these verses earlier, it's talking about sexual sins and, you know, sexual activity. And I didn't discuss that because you already know what sexual sin is. You, you might want to act like you don't, but that's not true. You just want to be naughty. <laughs> See, everyone's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but we should prioritize self-care and engaging healthy habits. Everyone say healthy habits. Why? Because I, I, God put me on this earth and he, he promised me a long life. And although God promises a long life, most of the time we cut it short. You know, like we need balanced nutrition. That don't mean if you have a piece of cake over here, you should have a piece of cake over here either. (laughs) Right? I'm I'm just saying. Regular exercise. Adequate sleep and rest. Relaxation. Mm -hmm. You're mad because you're having a vacation. Take a vacation. I can't afford one. Then take a staycation. Stay home and quit making everyone else miserable. That's that mirror. That's just that mirror, right? Get professional help if need be. There was a time in my life I had to get professional help. But we're responsible for ourselves. I think everybody should stay in counseling. My wife and I, we still have communication coaches because we have a tough time communicating. She don't know how to speak. 
my language. <laughs> Not too many people know how to speak my language. And I don't know how to speak hers. The book that women are from Venus and men are from Mars, it's not true, we're all from Earth and it's a messy, junky mess. Yes. So we gotta learn, amen? And we say self-care. Self so God promised us a long life and many times we cut it short. We have to make sure we're taking care of ourselves spiritually. We have to make sure we're taking care of ourselves mentally. We have to make sure we're taking care of ourselves physically because self-care is a key to self-love and loving ourselves is the key to limitless love. Yes. Number three, the last thing I'll say to you, here it is. Well, let me say this first, because it's a statement I don't want to forget. Self-care is giving God the best of you and not just what's left of you. <laughs> Self-care is giving God the best of you and not just what's left of you. Number three, here we go. Limit, limitless love is sustained by purpose. Limitless love. So we know limitless love comes. We know limitless grows. Limitless love now is sustained by purpose. What is purpose? Purpose is having a sense of direction, meaning, fulfillment in life. That's what purpose does. It gives meaning to life. It gives direction to life. It brings fulfillment in our lives. Using our gifts and talents to serve God and others is what purpose is. That you, you were created. How many believes here God created you? Come on, if you believe God created you. Well, if you believe God created you and you're not serving God and you're not serving others, then you haven't even found the fulfillment of your purpose yet. So we don't get you to serve because we just want to get more servers. We get you to serve because you find your purpose and fulfillment in life. Purpose is something that reminds us our lives were meant to be given away. Paul called himself a drink offering, poured out. Everyone say poured out. Earlier, we read about our purpose in our scripture that we were open, one of our opening scriptures. We're called to the purpose of loving God and loving others. And we say, loving God? Loving God. And we say, loving others. Loving in the book, Purpose Driven Life, many of you have read it, millions of copies sold in, uh, were sold, and our God-given purpose is broken down in five areas, right? You remember that? It's broken down in worship, what is worship? Well, some people think it's coming to church and begging God for what we need again this week. When really worship is bringing pleasure to God. We come in to pay homage to who he is. And when you do bring pleasure to God and you reach up to him, here's the promise he has. You'll never reach up to him without him reaching down to you. But the motive isn't to get something to God. It's to give something to God. Amen? And then the second part is fellowship. Everyone say fellowship. That's why we talk about small groups. That's, that's why we have events. That's why we do what we do. That's, that's why Pastor Terry and Anita and, and the staff here and the volunteer team here, they put everything together. So you have fellowship. Fellowship is, is really where you grow spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. Many times we forget discipleship is really walk alongside one another. Yeah. Yeah. I went to see the movie yesterday, Jesus Revolution. Anyone see that? Yeah. I cried like a little schoolgirl. Yeah. I cried the whole movie and I felt bad to look down at Pastor Terry who's crying with me. But I mean, literally, I was fighting <laughs> because they, they literally showed a genuine picture of discipleship, which is walking alongside one another, fellowship. Another area is spiritual maturity, allowing our lives to be shaped. Another one is our ministry. We know what that is. That's our uniqueness being used with our talent and gifting God given us. And the last one's our mission, which is really his mission, reaching the lost, reaching the world and making sure we're making a difference. Amen. Come on, y'all with me? So limitless love now is sustained by this type of purpose. There is purpose. Purpose. Do you have a purpose? Do you sense purpose for your life? The reason you were born. The reason God brought you into existence. The very thing that makes life fulfilling is knowing your God-given purpose. The purpose of life is to discover God's gifts that he's given to us. And the meaning of life is to give them away. And we say purpose is the gift. And we say, meaning is given it away. I'm going to read in Ephesians. Look at this. As I begin to close, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. He planned what you would do and he planned that what you would do in all you're doing 
is helping others. <laughs> People are lost and they attempt to find fulfillment in stuff. You're surrounded by friends and colleagues and family members that are trying to be fulfilled in stuff. And you should be so fulfilled that when they see you, they know that there's a fulfillment they're missing. And that's the purpose we're talking about. Come on, I would say purpose. Charles Kingsley said it like this. All we need to make us really happy is something to be enthusiastic about. Oh, I can be enthusiastic about a new motorcycle, but the new wears off. I remember the first house we bought, my wife said, this is my dream home, we'll never move again. And here we are 35 years later getting ready to build our dream house. And I told her it's our last house. So purpose, it's not in something, it's in someone, his name is Jesus. Finding our purpose is the difference between existing and living a fulfilling life. Purpose is the true release of limitless love. For it is where our days are spent introducing Jesus to those who don't know him. I make no bones about it. If you're hearing you don't know Jesus today, I wanted to give a speech in such a way that you would get it. Because the rest of you that already know Jesus, I hope you got something. I, I love you. But our target audience are those who might not know what purpose is all about. There was a Scotchman who was going to introduce the game of golf to President Ulysses Grant. And he was so excited, he took the president out and he teed the ball up and he took a big swing at the, at the, at the ball and dirt flew everywhere, dirt went everywhere, even in the president's beard, but the ball stayed on the tee. He took another swing and the same thing happened. The president was just patient as it happened a few more times. Finally, the president calmly said, I will say there's a great deal of exercise to this game, but I don't see the purpose of the ball. <laughs> Stay with me because that's how, if we're not careful, so many spiritual lives are viewed. You go to church, you hear the greatest teaching you could hear. You go to small group, you read your Bible, you show up at the events they have. You turn in your devotion with your friends on you, version Bible. But if you're not sharing the message of hope and purpose to a world that don't know Jesus, the world will see a church where there's a lot of exercise, but they're failed to see the purpose of your salvation. So just let me pray for you as every head's bowed and every eye's closed. Father, I just pray for every individual that's here right now. God. I pray that each one would begin to see how much you love them. The depth of your love for them, God. Now while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, maybe you're hearing you say, Pastor Kevin, I'm born again. I know Jesus Christ. I know I'm going to heaven. There's no doubt in my mind. But as you were giving your talk today, I felt Holy Spirit deal with me concerning my purpose, concerning my self-acceptance, concerning my self-care, concerning how I always look outside at other things and other people and I don't look into the mirror and be self-objective about me. Maybe you're saying I'm not engaged in my purpose. Oh, I'm born again and I just don't want my life to be about a bunch of exercise. I want there to be purpose in my salvation. If that's you, you felt that as a Christian sitting here, you know the Holy Spirit dealt with you. You want prayer for that? In a way of asking for prayer, just slip your hand up. Come on, right back down. Good, 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 good. Just write them right back down. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So many hands. Thank you, thank you. Yes, amen, thank you. Father, I pray for each one of these believers right now that lifted their hand, that said, I know I'm not, I, I've got to be more involved in my self-acceptance, more involved in my self-care, more involved in my purpose. I've got to learn to give my life away for my salvation to mean something. God, I pray they won't leave like they came in Jesus' name. In the coming days, weeks, months, and years, let them remember this moment, Holy Spirit, that you spoke to them about their purpose. You spoke to them about limitless love. Now, one more question. It's a question I never close without asking. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord? I'm not asking you if you went to church as a child, if you were baptized as a baby, if you're a good person. That's cool. All those things are great but it's not 
your entrance into heaven. The Bible says we've all sinned. Sin separates us from God. It says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness for sin. That's why Jesus came to earth in the form of a man. Because a man sinned, a man would have to die. Jesus came. He lived a perfect life, knowing no sin, born of a virgin. Then it was life. They led him to a cross where he laid his life down, spilling out his blood. His blood does not just simply cover your sin. It erases your sin, past, present, and future. Deeming you righteous in the righteousness of God. But Jesus, Jesus said it this way in the word. He is the word. Here's what it says in Romans. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That is salvation. That is the way. What does it mean to be saved? First of all, to be saved from empty life. Remember the stuff I talked about that's not adding to you? It's not something, it's someone, Jesus. You tried to fill your emptiness with drugs, alcohol, parties, relationships, business, money, career, hobbies, busyness but you still feel empty, you still feel void, that's because Jesus is the only one that can fill that void. Secondly, means saved into a place called heaven. Heaven's a perfect place. No more sickness, no more pain, no more disease, no more viruses. No one's wearing a mask in heaven. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father which is in heaven but by me. So my heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm not gonna put a spotlight on you. I'm not gonna call you forward. I'm not gonna have you stand up. I just wanna pray for you right there like I prayed for the others. But if you're here right now, you need to make your life right with God, Jesus as your Lord. Come on, as these others already have, just simply lift your hand up and right back down. Say, pray for me, Pastor. One, two, come on, right up, right back down. Three, four, five, someone else, six, thank you. Seven, thank you so much. Is there anyone else to say, Pastor Kevin, today is the day I accept Jesus as my Lord. Today's the day I accept him as my Savior. Is there another, come on, don't hesitate. I wait just one more second. Slip your hand up like these have, saying, Pastor Kevin, that's me. Include me in this prayer, please. I wanna know that heaven's my future. I wanna know that Jesus is my Lord. Are you here? All right, you seven or eight that lifted your hand. I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor and repeat this prayer after me out loud, not by yourself. Everyone here that is born again, I'm gonna ask you to say this prayer with them to support them. Maybe you're new, you weren't comfortable lifting your hand. You can still pray this prayer. Just make sure you let the team know afterwards so we can help you in your spiritual life. This is that prayer that we'll all pray. Those of you lifted your hand, pray it with us. Father, come on everyone together. Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe he's your son. I believe he died on the cross. He was buried and rose again. Jesus, I confess you now as my Lord, my Savior. Forgive me for my sin. Make me new. From this day forward, I place my life completely in your hands. And I place myself in a local church to learn more of you that through greater knowledge of who you are, I will grow in deeper love with you. In Jesus' name. Come on, welcome these to the family of God. Come on, church, celebrate. Come on, celebrate. Woo! Hey! Hey! That's Andrea. All right, let's, let's continue that atmosphere of celebration. Before you get up and before you move, we've got to celebrate these, these that have, have, have made a decision that, that they have said that, Lord, you are my Lord and you are my Savior. And this is what I want you to do. For those of you who have raised your hand, I want you to look at me for just one second. Pastor Tim is standing in the back and Pastor Kevin said something uh, just a little bit earlier. He said, discipleship is walking side by side with people, right? Well, this is your next step that you need to take. You need to meet Pastor Tim back there because he has some materials that he wants to give you because we don't want you to walk the journey alone. You're not gonna be able to walk the journey alone. So when we stand up and we sing this last song, I want you to grab all of your belongings and go meet Pastor Tim back there. He's just gonna give you some stuff. He's not gonna hold you long. So let's stand to our feet because everybody else, we're gonna continue this spirit of atmosphere. We're gonna, we're gonna give God glory for what he's done in this place. All right, let's sing this together. This is what living looks like. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. 
like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we